click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends in the previous lecture we have got to know about uh, that is how can we prepare and hello ring especially we have got to talk about that is how can we prepare chlorobenzene and uh, based on that we are going to talk about now that is how uh, can we prepare different chemicals using chlorobenzene that is we are going to talk about the chemical properties of chlorobenzene in this lecture so let us start with that So therefore, we are going to talk about the different chemical reactions that are being exhibited by the chlorobenzene in presence of. Therefore, the first one is. That is reaction with Cl2 in presence of FeCl3. So reaction of chlorobenzene with Cl2 in presence of FeCl3. So this is what we are going to talk about and uh, talking about the next one that is. That is reaction with the concentrated HNO3 or basically um, nitric acid in presence of concentrated h 2 so this is, that is basically nitrating mixture so what will happen when chlorobenzene is reacted with uh, this reagents and uh, let us talk with the uh, another one that is reaction with concentrated h 2 so Reaction with methyl chloride, obviously we are going to talk about that is Friedel-Craft reaction and uh, it includes that is Friedel-Craft acylation also. So therefore we could also uh, say that the chemical properties or the chemical reaction that have been exhibited by the chlorobenzene is uh, basically it can also react it with acetyl chloride. And finally, we are going to talk about that is uh, what would be the reaction of the chlorobenzene with that of that is uh, the sodium metal. So this is what we are going to talk about here. So let us understand that that is uh, all these reactions. But this is how we write the reaction with that is sodium metal. So this is what we have and uh, let us uh, understand each of it one by one. So starting with the first one that is what will happen if the chlorobenzene is reacted with Cl2 in presence of FeCl3. So talking about the first one that is suppose if we are using that is chlorobenzene and uh, this is what we represented it with. And we have to react it with that is with that of chlorine molecule that is Cl2 molecule and that also in presence of that is FeCl3. So suppose if this is the catalyst like FeCl3 that is what we are using it. So what will happen is this uh, is a kind of a substitution reaction that would take place over here and basically we know that uh, the aromatic compounds they do not undergo that is addition reaction very easily so they can undergo that is substitution reaction. So we have observed in the previous uh, lecture also that is uh, most of the uh, aromatic compounds suppose if uh, it consists of the that is electron return group like that of the Cl. So what happens is they basically exhibit ortho and para dieting groups. So that is the reason that there are two possibilities that we could get over here. That is uh, I would write it over here as the two possible structures uh, that we could get uh, is basically among that the one is where here the chlorine atom was as it is but after the reaction because we know that the aromatic uh, ring consists of uh, in this case of that is uh, the chlorobenzene it consists of basically five hydrogen atoms but we have also discussed that uh, ortho and para uh, positions are more preferable uh, uh, positions of uh, where we find that the substitution reaction would happen so that is one of the possibility that uh, one of the H will take away one of the Cl atoms so as to form that is uh, the byproduct that is HCl and uh, that uh, remaining chlorine atom that would attach on the ortho position but meanwhile there is also possibility that the chlorine atom that could attach on that is uh, the hydrogen atom over here or that could replace the hydrogen atom over here and that is how we could find that is uh, the possibility or the product that we could get over here is basically this is a para substituent disubstituent 
group that is what we have got over here so among this two that is what we have uh, got to know about here so therefore the major part is that is also a main thing that we have to talk about and uh, for basically let us uh, uh, basically make a stoichiometry this doesn't mean that uh, uh, the one mole of the chlorobenzene that gives us two moles of this so for that suppose we have to balance it and that is what uh, i'm doing it we can write in that and these are the possible products that we could get so talking about this one this is basically known as one comma dichlorobenzene while well, this is basically 1 comma 4 dichlorobenzene we are talking about uh, this uh, uh, product that we have got over here it is basically a product that will be present in a minor quantity or this is called as the minor product while this is known as the major product the reason behind that is it is more symmetrical in terms of uh, not only in terms of the geometry uh, even we could say that even this is uh, uh, this could be symmetrical also but the thing is here as we know that electron uh, the withdrawal group that is Cl has been present over here and here also the electron withdrawal group Cl is present over here so that is the reason that uh, they have a particular inductive effect and they are basically opposite to each other and that is the reason that uh, uh, the uh, sim uh, there is a distribution of the charge happens uh, in a more symmetrical way and that is the reason this compound is basically more stable and this is basically known as the major product that is Paradichlorobenzene is the major product compared to that of the orthodichlorobenzene. So this is the thing that we have talked about and this is the first one. And now let us move on to the next one. So the reaction uh, of the chlorobenzene with that of the concentrated HNO3 as well as concentrated H2O4, basically known as uh, the nitrating mixture. So it will result in the formation of a product and that is as follows. Suppose if we are using that is a chlorobenzene over here, along with that of that is concentrated H2, HNO3 as well as H2O4. So we can write the uh, structure of uh, or the molecular formula of the HNO3 as HONO2 and then also we are using it in a concentration. We see that it is more concentrated and that is how we are reacting it with that is in presence of that is H2SO4. So it is been found that uh, since we know that uh, most of all we see ortho and the para, para uh, product that is what we could get over here so therefore suppose if one of the OH group that is being present over here if that uh, takes away this uh, hydrogen atom so as to form the byproduct that is H2O and now the product that is being uh, that is would, would be formed is basically So the product that we could get over here is basically here this is carbon number one and this is carbon number two so according to that we could say that uh, it is one chloro two nitro benzene so this is the uh, product that we have got over here and let me uh, write the name over here as one chloro two nitro benzene So there is another possibility or possibly I would say suppose if I am using that is two moles of uh, chlorobenzene along with that of two moles of that is uh, um, HNO3 or BCD nitric acid. So there are a mixture of products that we could get over here. So this is an ortho product that we have got over here and the para product is also that is what we could obtain and that is how we could find that the product that has been obtained over here is basically that is one chloro. 4 nitro benzene so this is what we have got over here along with that of the uh, byproduct as uh, H2O so again I would say that uh, in this case basically the one which is basically more uh, uh, that is present in a major quantity or the major product is basically the para one. so therefore this indicates that basically the para uh, substituted group that is what we have got over here is basically the major product and uh, that is what uh, the second reaction is and uh, now let us move on to the next one that is
that is reaction with concentrated H2SO4. So let us understand this reaction also. Suppose if I am using that is chlorobenzene. Here the structure is also very important because if we write the structure in a very good manner then we could be able to understand that how the substitution reaction takes place and that is how uh, I am mentioning it over here. So this is the chlorobenzene that I have mentioned over here and suppose if uh, that has been reacted with that of uh, that is concentrated h 2 food and uh, the concentrated h 2 food can be represented as in this way. So here the structure is uh, to write or to represent the structure or the molecule or the reagent that we have mentioned here it is also very important because it makes us to understand that how the reaction would take place uh, and that is the reason that uh, we are mentioning that is always at the ortho position how and uh, at the ortho position a substrate gets attached or at the para position a substrate get attached so that is the main or a group gets attached so that is the main thing that uh, we are concerned with this kind of reaction so now let us talk with the next one that is the possible product that we could get over here or we could get basically a mixture of product if we use basically uh, that is two moles of uh, chlorobenzene along with that of two moles of that is sulfuric acid. So let me give an idea that is uh, what happens and what are the possible products that we could get. So basically as we know that uh, a hydrogen has been present on the that is on the ortho position uh, with respect to that of the chlorine atom that has been uh, uh, attached to the carbon atom over here and uh, based on that we could find that uh, because H2S4 is basically a dehydrating agent and in that case of a nitrogen mixture also we have used concentrated H2S4. So that concentrated H2S4 is basically it is acting as a catalyst also as well as it is acting like a dehydrating agent and that is how the water molecules get removed and once the water molecules get removed we could say that the nitration would be possible and uh, this is how we are only using uh, that is a H2S4 and we are not using that is the HN3 over here otherwise it would be called as a nitration reaction but now it is basically in this kind of reaction where you use only uh, H2S4 along with that of uh, uh, we are reacting with that of chlorobenzene is especially it is known as a sulfonation reaction. So let us uh, go on further and uh, the possible product that we could get over here is the byproduct would be H2O. But meanwhile, the product that we have uh, got over here, it will be so it will be this. And what is the name of this one? So let me give you the name uh, or the IOP setting for this one. So this carbon is uh, called to be carbon number one, while this is the carbon number two, where the seal is being attached over here. So therefore, the name of this one could be given as that is two chloro benzene sulfonic acid while the other product that we could get over here is basically I would write it over here so this will be the product plus H2 so the name of this one would be basically if I consider this to be carbon number one, this is carbon number two, three, and four. So basically, the name of this kind of product that is what we have got over here is basically four chloro benzene sulfonic acid. And again, this is basically the major product that we would get over here because it is also more symmetrical and more stable compared to that of uh, this ortho product that we have got over here. And this is basically the reaction that I was talking about. And now let us move on to the next one and that is So the next reaction is the reaction with methyl chloride. So whenever a chlorobenzene is reacted with that of uh, methyl chloride, it doesn't take space uh, the reaction on its own. We have to uh, get a particular catalyst and in that case basically we are talking about that is Friedel-Craft alkylation. Yes. In Friedel-Craft alkylation what we do is we use basically uh, not only the alkyl chloride so as to get uh, attached the alkyl towards uh, the as a substituent uh, towards the chlorobenzene or towards the any kind of uh, that is aromatic compound especially when it comes to benzene so for that we have to use certain kind of uh, the catalyst and that is basically anhydrous AlCl3 or aluminium trichloride so this is what we have to use and this is what I am going to represent about Friedel-Craft 
So this is what I'm going to talk about that is Fredkraft alkylation process. So let me talk about the first example. For example, if I would say that is uh, if the chlorobenzene, suppose if it is been reacted with that of that is methyl chloride and that methyl chloride can be, can be represented in this way and uh, that also we could say that uh, if we are using that is anhydrous AlCl3 so in this case basically we could say that uh, the hydrogen that is present on the ortho position as well as the hydrogen that has been present on uh, the uh, para position they will undergo the substitution reaction and not the meta position or the uh, hydrogen that has been present at the meta position with respect to that of the chlorine that has been present attached to the carbon atom over here. So the reaction takes place in such a manner that is uh, the uh, hydrogen along with that of the Cl they will be removed in the form of that is HCl and uh, meanwhile talking about the next thing that is only so the only thing that has been left out is basically the CH3 molecule or the methyl uh, one so that methyl will be attached on the ortho position if there is a one possibility so therefore the product that we could get over here is so this is the product that we have so this is a, a one of the possibility while talking about the next one that is the other possibility that we could get over here is where we could find that is the methyl group that is been attached on the para position and uh, this is the byproduct that we have so let us talk about the IUPC nomenclature. So if I talk about the IUPC nomenclature of this uh, molecule or this compound that we have got over here, so therefore I would consider this as carbon number one, this as carbon number two. So making this to be called as that is one chloro two methyl benzene. And talking about the other product, obviously it is very, uh, but obviously to understand that it, it would be named as that is 4 chloro, so that it could be given the name as 1 chloro, 4 methyl benzene. So if we compare it with the mixture, suppose if the mixture that is what we have get, uh, that we will get uh, after using that is 2 moles of chlorobenzene and with we have reacted two moles of that is methyl chloride. So the possible would be there will be a mixture of that is one chloro two methyl benzene as well as one chloro four methyl benzene. So which one would be the major product? Yes, again the same thing that I would I would like to repeat that is uh, the para products that we have got over here or the para students that is what we could get uh, for the benzene thing that would be the more major product that we could get over here. And now let us move on to the next one that is. So the reaction of the chlorobenzene with that of the acetyl chloride and again in presence of that is uh, an address FeCl3 that is what we'll use. And this kind of reaction is basically known as Friedel-Crafts acylation reaction. So now let us see this kind of reaction and let's see what is the product that we could get. Suppose if we are using chlorobenzene and if we react it with that of that is acetyl chloride and that could be represented as CH3, C double bond O. CL and that also in presence of uh, I would like to do here as anhydrous AlCl3. So the possible product that I could get uh, or suppose if I use that is two moles of uh, I'm just mentioning over here I right? suppose if I'm using two moles of uh, chlorobenzene along with that of that is two moles of acetyl chloride then the product that I could get is a mixture of uh, that is an ortho product as well as a para product. So the First, suppose let me talk about what happens if uh, basically the substitution takes place on the ortho position where the hydrogen is been present. So, suppose the product that we could get is so the uh, hydrogen that has been present at the ortho position. So, let me talk about that thing. So, this Cl or this chlorine atom that would be able to remove this. Uh, H along with this, that of this hydrogen atom and they would be removed in the form of that is HCl as a byproduct. So the possible uh, thing that has been uh, 
remaining all the only thing that has been remaining with us is basically this group that is what we have that is I could write it over here as C double bond O CH3 so this kind of substituent that has been attached on that is ortho position with respect to that of the uh, chlorine atom where it has been attached and uh, then the possibility that we could get is that will be where we could see that uh, the group or acetyl group is been attached on the para position while getting HCl as a byproduct. So this is the possible product that we have and uh, depending on that we could easily name the uh, product as. Suppose if I consider uh, this to be the carbon number 1 and this is carbon number 2. So therefore we could say that uh, the uh, name of the product is basically 2 chloro acetophenone. While talking about this product it would be basically if this is carbon number 1, this is 2, 3 and this is 4. Then the name of this product is basically 4 chloro uh, acetophenone. So depending on this thing uh, the major product that we could get is basically the para product. Or the para disulfuric group that is what we have got over here on the benzene and this will be the para product basically we could say that as a 4 chloro uh, acetophenone will be the major product that we could get so this was related to frail graph alkylation as well as frail graph acylation and let us talk about the last kind of reaction where we could find that is what happens if an chlorobenzene is been reacted with that of that is sodium atom So the next is a reaction uh, of the chlorobenzene with that of the sodium metal. So there are two possibilities that I am going to talk about. Suppose if we are uh, reacting the chlorobenzene along with that of uh, that is sodium and we are using the chlorobenzene of two moles as well as along with that we are also using two moles of uh, that is sodium. So this is the balance reaction that I am talking about. So there is a possibility that we could find a coupling of the uh, that is phenyl groups and that kind of uh, coupling of this phenyl group is basically known as uh, fitigation. But what if we use that is chlorobenzene along with that of the alkyl halide and the product of or the coupled product that we could get is known as that is uh, Wood's fitigation because we know uh, that is what is the uh, uh, Wood's reaction and this is basically a combination of the both two. So now let us uh, understand that how can we represent this kind of reaction. So let me first of all talk about that is what happens when we are talking about. So suppose if uh, chlorobenzene is been treated with that of sodium metal that is uh, I am representing over here as sodium metal and that also in presence of that is dry ether. So we have to balance the reaction because uh, it is a kind of a coupling reaction where in Wood's reaction also we have got to know about uh, that is uh, what happens when an alkyl halide if we use two moles of alkyl halide and we, we, if we react with that of the sodium then uh, basically the coupling reaction would take place over there and we could get a higher alkene. So here also we are using basically uh, uh, chlorobenzene and along with that of we have to balance the reaction so that the byproduct that we could get is basically NaCl. So, 2 moles of chlorobenzene along with that of 2 moles of that is sodium metal it will give us the byproduct as I have write it over here as NaCl and that also 2 moles of NaCl that is what we could get and based on that we could see that the coupling reaction would take place in such a manner that uh, we could get basically So this is what we have got over here and this kind of reaction uh, is basically known as fitting reaction. So there is another possibility that what if we use chlorobenzene along with that of uh, that is an alkyl chloride suppose uh, if I am mentioning about that is methyl chloride and if I am reacting with two moles of sodium and that also in presence of dry ether. So therefore there will be coupling of reaction uh, that could take place over here and the byproduct that we could get is basically 2 moles of NaCl that is what we could get and basically the methyl the group that has been left out over here that would be attached on 
the pencil and that's how we could get basically toluene. So this kind of reaction that we have mentioned over here is basically it is known as So this kind of reaction is known as Wood's fitting reaction. So that's it. This is what I was talking about. And thank you, friends, for watching this video. I hope you have understood this video very clearly, and you have got to know about various uh, chemical properties that are being exhibited by the chlorobenzene. So thank you, and uh, I hope I'll see you next time. And till then, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much.